The story I'd like to tell you is called In the Rainforest at Night. And I'd like to invite you all to bring your biggest imagination as we begin with a very grumpy gecko, a lizard. He is hanging upside down under a tree and catching flies and mosquitoes like this. He's feeling quite cross. Gecko is trying to get to sleep, but all of the nighttime creatures are awake, buzzing and making noise, and he is not happy about it. Those fireflies, they keep on lighting up the grass, keeping me awake, he complained, and he decided to go and speak to Tiger about it. Gecko made his way through the grass and he found Tiger stretched out asleep beneath a tree. He poked him awake. Tiger! Tiger! Wake up! Wake up! I can't get to sleep! The fireflies keep flashing and flicking and flicking and flashing! Make them stop! You're in charge here! Tiger was not happy at all. He opened one eye lazily, wondering what could Gecko possibly have to complain about. Fine, said Tiger. I will go and see why the fireflies are flashing through the grass and keeping you awake. And so Tiger set off on this journey. He slowly padded through the grass, making his way, looking for the fireflies. And in no time at all, he saw them sparkling up through the forest, lighting up the grass and the bushes and the trees. And when they saw Tiger coming, they got all excited because he never journeyed over to where they were. Oh, oh, Tiger is here, Tiger is here, they all giggled and laughed. But Tiger was not laughing. He was quite tired and did not want to be there. Excuse me, fireflies. Could you please tell me why you are flashing and flicking and flicking and flashing? You are keeping the gecko awake, which is keeping me awake. Oh, we're so sorry, said the fireflies, giggling to each other. We did not mean to keep you awake, but we have got a very important job to do. You see, we are flashing and passing on a message from the woodpecker. The woodpecker is tapping out a warning on the trunk of a tree. If you want us to stop flashing and flicking, you need to go and speak to the woodpecker. Right, said the tiger, feeling a little bit cross that now he's got to carry on his journey through the forest. I will go and speak to the woodpecker, he said. And so Tiger growled and prowled, making his way around the trees, and he followed the sound of the woodpecker tapping on the trees. <coughs> Tiger walked through the night, listening to the sound until finally he came to the majestic woodpecker who was tapping with its beak. <coughs> Excuse me, said Tiger. Could you please tell me why you are tapping so loudly in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the night? You are making the fireflies flash and flick, which is keeping the gecko awake, which is keeping me awake, explained the tiger. And the woodpecker looked down its long beak at Tiger and said, I have got a very important job to do. I am tapping on the trunk of this tree to pass on a message about the dung beetle. You see, she is rolling up great big piles of dung and I am just warning everyone so that they do not step in it. If you want me to stop you need to go and speak to the dung beetle. Right, said Tiger, thinking that he was never ever going to get any sleep tonight. I will go and journey to the dung beetle. And so he stretched lazily and prepared himself for an even longer walk. 
Tiger plodded along, slowly making his way through the forest. He twisted and turned with the paths which were following all of the other creatures out at night. And there he came to the shiny backed beetle. She was heaving and pushing and rolling up great big balls of dung. Excuse me, said Tiger grumpily. Could you please tell me why you are rolling around all of these dungs on the floor in the middle of the forest in the middle of the night? You are making the woodpecker tap on the tree, which is making the fireflies flash and flick, which is keeping the gecko awake. And that is keeping me awake. Oh, I'm so sorry, said the dung beetle. And she wiped her brow because it really was quite hard work rolling up all of this dung. I've got a very important job to do, she said. I am rolling up all of this dung just to clear a space in the path because the water buffalo keeps dropping great big piles of dung in the path. Oh, it's making such a mess. We don't want anyone to slip over. If you want me to stop, she said, you need to go and speak to the water buffalo. Right, okay, said Tiger, thinking to himself that this journey was taking quite a long time. But I will go and speak to the water buffalo, he said. And he padded on through the forest. He made his way around the trees, past the vines, past the bushes, and he followed the scent. The scent of a very smelly, stingy, pongy swamp. Because that's where he found the water buffalo. She was stretched out and rolling around in the muddy, stinky swamp. She heaved herself out of the water and made her way over to the path. She was just about to drop some dung when Tiger stopped her. No, 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 no. Stop what you're doing, water buffalo. Please tell me why you are dropping great big piles of dung in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the night. It is making the dung beetle roll it all up, which is making the woodpecker tap out a warning, which is making the fireflies flash and flick. And that is keeping the gecko awake, which is keeping me awake. Oh dear, said the water buffalo. I am very, very sorry. I did not mean to keep anyone awake. It's just that I've got a very important job to do. I am dropping great big piles of dung to fill up the large holes that have been made by the rain which is pouring down and creating holes in the ground. So this is what I am doing to keep the path nice and smooth. If you want me to stop, said the water buffalo, you need to go and speak to the rain. Oh dear, sighed Tiger. I'm going to have to go and journey really far and high to find the rain. I'm never going to get any sleep tonight. And Tiger was right. The sun was just beginning to peep over the edge of the horizon with its bright pink shades. But Tiger was determined to carry on with his journey. He decided to climb up the highest mountain peak. He scrambled across the rocks. He climbed over the vines. He scrambled over the bushes. He passed the waterfall until finally he reached the top of the mountain. And when he got there, he felt the rain trickling down from above. He saw the rain filling up the puddles. He looked down and he saw the rain filling up the lakes and the rivers and the seas. He saw the rain watering the plants and he smelt the flowers. And Tiger realized he couldn't ask the rain to stop raining because we need the rain. 
We need the rain to, to drink and wash and help our plants to grow. And so he decided that he was going to journey all the way back down to his home and let the rain be. He climbed down the mountain, he walked past the lake, he padded past the dung beetle and he walked past the woodpecker and the fireflies lighting up the grass and he found the grumpy gecko hanging upside down from the tree. Well, tiger, said the gecko, did you make the fireflies and all of those creatures stop making all of that noise in the forest at night? And tiger said, no, I did not because they have all got a very important job to do. We are all connected and we all need to learn to live in peace with each other. And with that, the tiger let out a great big tiger roar and told the gecko to close its eyes and go to sleep. And that's where we'll leave the grumpy gecko in the rainforest at night for today. Thank you for listening to that story, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it.